One of the few episodes I'd been told about before setting out to review all of The Outer Limits was the Xanti Misfits. I didn't know much about it, but I knew that it was a great example of what The Outer Limits is all about. Let's get to it, shall we? Will you stop the clatter, you bubble-headed booby? Hit me. The Outer Limits. The scientist and historian Steve Grave has come to a ghost town called Morgue, and after joking about the laziness of the writing... History has been recorded in some pretty morbid places, Major. But when a historian named Grave finds himself in a ghost town called Morgue... He meets with General Hart and a team from the Strategic Air Command. The General briefs Grave on the matter of the aliens from the planet Xanti, who have decided to treat the Earth as their own personal Australia by offloading some maladjusted prisoners on the human race. Their orders are simple. Give the alien misfits a secluded place and leave them the heck alone. Of course, humans being humans, this doesn't go off so simply. While the general is showing off his Minecraft playset, a man and woman on the run bust through a military checkpoint and head straight for the Xanti landing zone, where their car breaks down, no doubt because it feels guilty for committing murder. The man inside the car, Bruce Dern, the character's name is Ben Garth, but... I'm gonna keep referring to him as Bruce Dern. Has come to the desert because he's probably sick of all the trees. There's not gonna be any trees. We don't know what exactly he's done, but he has a stash of money, a woman married to another man, and worst of all, a smoking habit. Lisa, his female companion, explains to him that she's there because she wants a little danger and instability in her life. But then she immediately changes her mind and tells Bruce Dern she's going back to her husband to set things right. But, of course, they're in the desert, so she doesn't actually go anywhere. That's when Bruce Dern notices the alien spacecraft up on the rocks and decides to investigate, showing off his ripped pants along the way. You okay, SpongeBob? I guess so. Except I ripped my pants! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the SAC outpost, Grave and the General talk about what to do while constantly having to deal with the resident Negative Nancy, Major Hill, who won't be dissuaded from his opinion that everything is horrible, everything anybody does is wrong, and that the Xanti mean to wipe out the human race. According to the history I've studied, friends don't coerce one another. The General tries to re-establish communications with the Xanti ship. Translate. For dark is the swathe that mows like a harvest. But all he winds up hearing are the final words of a dying Bruce Dern, who has seen what the Xanti look like and paid for it with his life. When Lisa goes looking for him, she too encounters the Xanti creature, a big ant with a human face, which honestly isn't much worse than what you might expect to find in the Australian outback. Grave then gets the idea to go into the zone to reassure the Xanti that humans don't mean to go into the zone. While he waits for further instructions, the general tells him there's a woman out there. A woman? Grave subsequently ignores orders to head back to base because, well, there's a woman out there. He finds Lisa, squishes the Xanti chasing her, and gets a speech about the power of self-destruction before taking her back with him to base, while the General and Major Hill debate the merits of blowing up the Xanti ship. Once Lisa and Grave get there, though, the argument becomes moot as the Xanti ship lands on the building and the creatures lay siege. The men fight back and eventually lay waste to the entire complement of alien prisoners, and then they hear from the Xanti High Command that this was their plan all along, that they couldn't execute the prisoners themselves, but they knew humans were crazy homicidal and could easily take care of the problem. This is a really interesting episode, and I can see why it's one of the more notorious episodes of the show. The creature design really sticks with you, and the stop-motion effects are genuinely creepy. I love that the aliens are small, and the insectoid design kind of hits your lizard brain in a way that immediately makes you uncomfortable. The episode is also carried by an interesting theme about misfits, literally people who don't fit in and how to deal with them, and the uncomfortable concept that 
extermination is the inevitable solution. All that said, some of the acting in this one is distractingly bad, especially from the guy playing Major Hill, and Bruce Dern is woefully underutilized. It is a really good episode that deserves its reputation, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it one of my favorites. And that's all I have on the Xanti Misfits. Now, as always, do all those youtube things, check out my Patreon, and all that other good youtube stuff. But uh, until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek, telling you to never be ashamed of what you love. As long as you're not hurting anybody. <laughs>